Well, hello, ladies. You are in for a wonderful few next minutes as I have a wonderful lady uh, who is my friend and she's a woman of God who has come to speak today. And I invited her to speak because she has something to say, something you need to hear. So lean in closely and hear the words of this wonderful, wonderful lady. Well, this month is Mental Minority Mental Health Month. And uh, we as minorities, the ma majority of us are, we need to really hear what she has to say so that we can uh, learn from it. And then when we start to speak, we can use all of the things that she is going to give us to speak so that we too can be happy uh, and live the best life that God has for us to live. She has been there, done that, and she's written a book about it. She's very transparent, uh, you know, with mental health. A lot of times the first thing we as African-American women do, we want to hide it or ignore it, act like it doesn't exist. And uh, our friends won't tell us that, hey, there's something that needs to be addressed here. So I've invited her today as uh, we talk about speaking uh, to join us and to share what God has given her over the years through her experience with mental health and mental education. So Dr. Juanita Rasmus, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me, Lady O. And I appreciate that prophetic word on the doctorate. <laughs> speak well, like, it, speak I'm it. Speaking <laughs> it because I kept hearing it in my spirit. We have a lady that's coming on and um, well, I think she did finally get her doctor, but she's called the love doctor. So I'm gonna speak that into your life. Thank because you, I, the reason I say that because a lot of us have so much experience uh, at the top level that we have our doctorate degree from the degree of life. Come um, on now. Of life and hard knocks and the school yeah. of, of Jesus Christ and, and working with church people and all of those things, our friends and families. So we do have that degree. So I'm giving it to you. <laughs> and, and I'm receiving it. it. <laughs> when you get it, you got to come back and say, I got it. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll do it. Yes. Do it. Listen, you look so beautiful. Well, thank um, you. Thank you. You look pretty well, gorgeous yourself over there. Uh, well, listen, I am just really uh, looking at your makeup and your hair and our uh, Friday night is going to be talking about the way we look, that we speak when we look, the, when we dress, we're speaking, when we put our makeup on, we're speaking, even though we don't open our mouth. So when I saw you, even though you didn't say, I'm beautiful, I have a makeup, I could read you, I, I could mm. hear your voice through what you, the way you look. So, um, and I believe you told me that during the pandemic, you learned some things about speaking to yourself, even if you're not speaking to other people, when you get up in the morning, the first person you speak to is yourself. Tell exactly. us about what you learned here in the pandemic with this makeup and hair going on here. Well, you know, one of the things uh, quarantine has taught me is that we have been dependent upon a lot of people in our community to help us, right? Um, normally, if I had been doing something where I was going to be speaking at a conference, I would possibly have somebody professionally do my makeup. I would have my hair together, right? And in quarantine, those resources weren't available. Exactly. However, YouTube was. Um, and so one of my daughters said, Mama, just go to YouTube, Google it, right? And so one of the things I did, um, because the Holy Spirit told me one morning, one of the very first days of uh, the quarantine lady, oh, the spirit said, get up every day as though you're going to see an audience. Mm -hmm. And so I said, okay. And so for me, that meant make sure my hair was presentable, make sure my makeup was done. Um, because what I didn't realize in that moment is that God was prepping me for my book, which was going to be coming out. Little did I know during quarantine. Mm -hmm. So no day would catch me by surprise. I would be up. I would be dressed, I would have had my devotion, I would put on my makeup, and I was ready for whatever the day presented. But that was because the Lord told me, get up every morning as though you're gonna be speaking to an audience. And little did I know that actually came to pass. Actually came to pass. And you were ready. <laughs> yes, yes. So, uh, when you're, I see your second book behind you, but this is your second book, correct? And L Learning to Be is my first book. The second yes. book is this one. Yeah. 
And so that's the other thing. I've had an opportunity uh, during quarantine to get quiet um, and listen for what it is God wants to say to us now. And right. so one of the things that happened for me is that during this uh, time of kind of uh, uh, tuning out so many of the outside influences and the noises and the and and I say noise and I say noise respectfully but during the course of a day when you've talked to 20 or 30 people in the course of the day it becomes noise, noise. and so what I've learned is how even more important it is for us to have some quiet time during this space of quarantine so that we're hearing from God and in the course of that uh, one of my editor wrote me or called me, I can't remember which, but she asked me if I would consider writing a 40 day devotional. And so that became my second book. Right. Uh, that's right. And and so this is just so important because I believe God shut everything down so we could hear from him and we could distance ourselves from all of the noise. We found there was so much going on that we really didn't need. And so in the process, we were able to rest and we were able to look at ourselves and to hear from God and do some things like write your book to be productive. And you can't do that a lot of time with all the distractions. So uh, that's a very good point that you're doing. A lot of times these distractions cause us mental health and mental issues. Absolutely, they do. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, so often, if I if I ask every every person that's listening to us right now to take a deep breath, take a deep breath, and exhale. And I said, what do you need? Mm. Many of us would have to sit with that question for a moment. Nothing would necessarily pop right up exactly. because we've been so busy, distracted, meeting other people's agendas, meeting other people's expectations, that we've not made any space to ask ourselves, what do I need? What do I need? What do I, not what do the children need? What do this need? That's right. And isn't that what women do? And sometimes it's exactly. a meltdown when we realize I'm just not enough. I can't do all of this. And we just shut down. Our mind says, you know, just shut down. Right. And so I, I really think that I'm going to say this too, you know, like I was saying that God shut everything down so we could get things together and have a moment of rest, a sabbatical. And that's what he gave us. But I want to just ask the women, what did you do with that sabbatical? Did you watch more TV? Did you sleep more? Did you gossip more on the phone? Or what did you do with your time for a whole year? And um, so I'm glad to see that you are a great example of what we should do with our time. Keep ourselves looking good speak to yourself and be prepared when the time comes that God will call you to speak what he's given you. So, so listen, I want to, without, before we get any further, some people have not heard you before, some have, but can you just quickly give us an overview of your life? I know you're very transparent with it because many of the ladies today have not seen somebody like you admit openly that you went through some stuff. Sure, sure. I, I admit openly, I live with a <laughs> mental health diagnosis. All right. Uh, the reality is that I had been living with a narrative. I'd been telling myself about how I was supposed to be in the world. Right. And for me, my narrative was very much rooted in being a perfectionist, uh, being a good little girl, even though I was a grown woman. Right. Mm -hmm. Living into this story that I had created as a child. And that story was all rooted in I want to be loved, accepted, and approved of, right? Oh, and so wow. as a child, needless to say, we don't sit around and go, what do I really need in life? But mm -hmm. we begin to observe and we pay attention and then we create a story about ourselves. Some of us create the superwoman story. Some of us create the, I'm, um, I, I'm, I'm needy, I'm dependent, I need somebody to take care of me, I'm a victim story, right? Mm -hmm. and, and circumstances and situations will show up that reinforce whatever story we tell ourselves. Some mm -hmm. of us are the scapegoat. We're the one that we carry the shame of the family and we just keep reinforcing that story because we keep telling ourselves that's how we are, that's who we are, we'll never change, nothing can ever work for us, nothing will ever uh, liberate us from our position. And so one of the things I wanna say to, to your audience is that number one, watch your story. 
Mm. Mental health is rooted in the story we tell ourselves. And I had told myself that story so long that finally the story almost took me out. Wow. That's, that's powerful. So why? Because you can never do enough if you think you have to do in order to earn approval, to earn acceptance, to get the pat on the back, to get the next certificate or award at work. If you are living out of that kind of doing space, your mm -hmm. doer gets exhausted. Whoa. Oh my goodness. So we're living in that doing space. That's exactly right. Trying to do stuff to be accepted, trying exactly. to do stuff to be enough to exactly. get someone's approval to get yeah. the acceptance, to feel better about ourselves. Right. And unfortunately, so many of us live much of our life that way, mm -hmm. always uh, being the yes person, not recognizing that no is as sacred and holy as yes is. There are times when I didn't realize that not every assignment was mine to do. And so I've learned because of uh, having had a mental health diagnosis of major depressive episode and relapsing, uh, getting medication, seeing a psychiatrist, doing talk therapy, starting to feel better. Then I think I don't need the medicine and then I relapse, right? Mm -hmm. Because I start feeling so good, not realizing that all the things that I did, seeing the therapist, taking the daily medication, mm -hmm. seeing my psychiatrist once a month, those were health care means and tools so that I could feel better. When I started feeling better, my ego said, oh, you don't need to take that medicine. Look how good you feel. Mm -hmm. The ego wow. never says, keep taking your medicine because that's why you feel so good. Exactly. Now, can you just kind of stay there a little bit uh, and sure. maybe give um, some symptoms or signs? How would I know if I'm just having a very bad day or if uh, people don't understand me or they're jealous of me? that I'm having a mental crisis or episode or even illness. Sure. Well, there, there are a number of things that I would encourage people to do. Number one, notice what you notice. Okay. Notice where your energy goes during the day. Notice when you wake up in the morning, do you feel energized because you had a good night's sleep? And you say, well, you know, I, I slept eight hours, but I feel exhausted. All right. So that was one of the symptoms for me is that I was sleeping 18 to 20 hours a day and mm -hmm. I didn't feel like I had, had any rest. Mm -hmm. um, I was worn out. Um, notice your yeah. sleep patterns. Sleep have patterns. your sleep patterns changed and those patterns have lasted for longer than two weeks? Mm -hmm. Notice your appetite. Has your appetite changed and that pattern has lasted longer than two weeks? Maybe you're eating more than you normally do or you're not eating as much as you used to or you're not drinking enough water or you're finding yourself drinking too many sodas and too much coffee and too much alcohol. Notice what you're noticing. You are your first line of defense to your own mental health. Mm -hmm. So for me, one of the things was my sleep was out of, out of control. My appetite, at one point uh, when this uh, process of the major depressive episode began, I found myself being ravenous. It was like I could not get enough to eat to make me feel satisfied and to make me feel full. My sleep was off. My eating was off. I wasn't drinking enough water. And so I was dehydrated, which I didn't know. But notice what you're noticing. Mm -hmm. Now, this is going to get down and dirty. All right. Notice your bowel patterns. Mm -hmm. Each person, after we eat, our bodies are designed to eliminate. If that's not happening, something's going on that needs adjustment. Notice what you're noticing. Notice if you find yourself feeling withdrawn, not wanting to be with people, finding yourself not uh, wanting to engage the, the things that used to bring you joy. That's a key word. Mm -hmm. When you find yourself backing away from the things that used to be life-giving for you, the things that used to give you joy, the things that used to make you laugh, the things that uh, used to get you excited about life, you no longer want to do those things. Right. Let's say, as an example, this is something really simple, but let's say that you're a person who, and, and this is really outside of COVID because COVID and quarantine changed many of our patterns. Oh, but yeah. you, if you will ground yourself in just noticing, 
taking some deep breaths, like I invited you to do a moment ago, mm -hmm. and just notice, how am I? Mm. How is it with my soul? Right. Do I have a measure of contentment? Mm -hmm. um, or am I doing things that feel exciting to me or life-giving to me? Am I uh, caring for myself in ways that uh, under the umbrella of quarantine that I'm able to do? So uh, one of the things I saw myself doing during qu quarantine, um, for six months, I was in another city and my husband was in Houston. I was helping to care for my grandkids and I found myself just eating all this stuff I wouldn't normally eat. Mm -hmm. When you notice what you're noticing, you'll begin to see that your patterns of behavior are different. Mm -hmm. And when you see that those patterns have lasted longer than two weeks, your sadness, overwhelming grief seems to have lasted longer than two weeks and nobody's died okay mm -hmm. i'm not talking about grief if you've had a recent loss yes and covid has presented a number of losses for us but when we talk about mental health protocol the very first thing you can do is stop and breathe mm -hmm. number two notice what you're noticing about the things that you would normally eat the way you would normally sleep, the kind of water intake you would normally have, and the way you have engaged pleasure or fun or joy. If you find yourself having backed up off those things, it might be wise mm -hmm. to call your primary care physician and just say, you know, I've noticed some patterns mm -hmm. um, and, and I'm not feeling myself. Um, or maybe you're feeling uh, it's, in some cases, I remember a place in the depression where I felt like the ever ready bunny and somebody had just wound my key too tight. And mm -hmm. I couldn't seem to stop feeling this sense of being wound up, wound up way just, too tight yeah, just, and not yeah. being able to relax, not being able to get in bed and, and calm down and settle down and, and then awake and refresh. So notice what you're noticing. And if you see these patterns have lasted longer than two weeks, I encourage you to talk to your primary care physician and say, hey, I just think I need a mental health checkup. Um, it's been a lot going on. And mm -hmm. so many of us would be wise to take that step. Exactly. And you know what? Um, I was just reflecting on what my children said to me. Uh, and, I, you know, this new generation, I call them new, they got kids now, but they were saying, mom, Everybody needs to have a counselor, even if nothing's wrong with them. They need to go. They were saying, Do you have a counselor? And I said, No. I said, I'm a counselor, but I know when I was, was becoming a counselor, they said every counselor needs a counselor. So I knew Absolutely. that. Absolutely. You know, and so even though nothing's wrong, just to talk things over, that's to right. calibrate. And yeah. so that, that's a great word you just said, Lady O. Yeah. Because it is about recalibrating. Exactly. We live with so much stress, so much tension mm -hmm. that sometimes we don't realize we've gotten very, very thin. Mm -hmm. The good thing about my therapist is that I've had her for so long, mm -hmm. I can walk in the room and she can tell, <laughs> okay, what's going on? <laughs> and there are other times when, when we've been doing Zoom because of the pandemic. And so even on, on Zoom, she'll say, all right, so what is it you're not saying? Uh -huh, uh -huh. What is it you're skirting around? What is it you're avoiding talking about? Mm -hmm. And then that gives me the opportunity to say, okay, I know. Let me tell you what happened. <laughs> let me, <You> know? <laughs> let me but, but, undress. But, but I, I need <laughs> to say this, this because spot off. this is yes, what yeah. really is going on. But you the know, the Bible I, says I, that yeah. a wise person seeks counsel. Counsel. That's right. A wise person. And so if you don't, so I would, you know, another thing about us, I'm just going to say it. We don't want to pay for a counselor. We think like, ah, she just listened to me talk, but you need to be recalibrated. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> and and, and that it, it's worth it. So you don't get too far to the left or to the right. And That's so right. that keeping that in. And so a lot of times people will get on uh, the phone, they'll talk to their girlfriends and they're rent and rave, but those people are just listening, but they can't help to get you recalibrated. That's good. Uh, so I wanted to say another thing too that I noticed when you said about sleeping too much, um, you can also not be able to sleep at all. That's I know right. a friend of mine years ago told me that she could literally could not go to sleep. And it was for, and I've had those nights, I've had probably my life about 
four times when I stayed awake the whole night. And usually just because I had something to do and I just could not bring my body to, to go to sleep. But she said, I have not slept in months. Right. Said, I have to go to the doctor to get medicine. Yes. To calm my body down and go to She said, I cannot go to sleep. So okay. if you find that you cannot go to sleep, that's mm -hmm. another big one. Right. Uh, and then another one that I, I wrote down too is isolation. Um, yes. We had a, a friend of ours whose daughter committed suicide, you know, and they're so um, experienced in how to isolate in the middle of people. You got to be able to learn when a person is checked out. That's right. That's absolutely You're right. Really not here. And so yeah. if you feel yourself, you know, you come to the Thanksgiving dinner, but you're really not in it. You, you're checked right. out, you right. know, and you, and you know that they may not yeah. know it. But before yeah. you get in that too long or stay in that situation, you need to seek some help because uh, that could lend to lend to suicide or hurting sure. yourself or somebody sure. else. Sure. Yeah. You know, and I want to say this, um, Google, uh, whatever you're feeling. Sometimes Google can give you too much information. Uh -huh, I know. But I think I, I think there are times when Google can be helpful. Uh, when we see, uh, could I, if you think to yourself, could I be depressed? Mm -hmm. All right. Depression is um, my, one of the things my therapist told me is depression is anger turns inward. Mm -hmm. um, for me, as quote, a good little girl, I wouldn't get mad. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't let you see me get mad. Yeah, I would just internalize the anger, turn yeah. it inside. And yeah. so depression is anger turned inward. <clears throat> mm -hmm. me. If you find yourself not expressing emotions, Google the emotion list. There's right. more than mad, glad happy and sad. There's mm -hmm. uh, rejection, feeling rejected. There's feeling despondent. There is feeling um, um, excited. There's feeling inspired. There are over 300 feeling words. Wow. Look at the feeling list. See uh, if any of those sad words, you just feel that most of the time, mm -hmm. then, then that is an indication that perhaps, here's, here's one of the things. With my experience of living with and I, I i can't stress that enough mm -hmm. when you receive a mental health diagnosis yes it is not a death sentence amen it amen. is learning that you have to live differently mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. the same as if you get a diabetic diagnosis exactly. you can't eat everything you can't eat everything. That's absolutely right. You learn that you have to live differently. You can still that, eat, that, but you can't yeah, eat absolutely. <laughs> but you learn to live differently. And it means, as an example for me, it meant noticing what I was noticing. Mm -hmm. What I realized is I kept giving myself away, if you will, by saying yes. Will you come speak here? Will you preach here? Will you do this retreat here? And I wouldn't make any margin for breathing space for myself. So I found myself constantly going from one thing to the next and just getting enough sleep to be able to get up and do it all over again. All over again. Notice what you're noticing about your own patterns of behavior. Some of us um, experience these patterns in our teenage years. Mm -hmm. Some of us experience mm -hmm. patterns in our, when we went away to college or started our first job, started adulting as the young people say now. <laughs> when you look at your own life, mm -hmm. you can be the one who says, there's a pattern here. Right. And I don't like it. It's wow. not life giving. It's not creating joy. And then you become the person who advocates for your own well-being. Wow. I, I like that because what you just said, and I just saw a visual there when you were saying, you know, what you just said, I could just say, say that to yourself in the mirror in, in the morning. There's some things going on. I don't like what I see. Yeah. I need to, you know, so you just kind of yeah. get that, that voice that's that right. to yourself first, because you're going to notice first. You're going to notice more than other people will notice. Um, so I, I think. But also. Go ahead. You no, know, I, I was just going to say, when you said you will notice more than other people, I would also say, don't discount what your friends have said to you. That's good. You see, I had a couple of friends who said before I, I, I in learning to be, I call my 
um, experienced the crash. Okay. Before I crashed, I had a, one of my parishioners called and said, Pastor Juanita, could I meet with you? I need to talk. And so I'm thinking she's coming to talk about some concerns she has, right? Need she to help her there. Yeah. And when we sit down, I say, you know, it's so good to see you. What's going on? How can I help you? How can she I said, help? Oh, you? it's not about me. I wanted to tell you that in prayer, the spirit said that you're depressed. Wow. And I immediately rejected it. I went, I'm not depressed. I feel great. I feel fine, right? Well, first of all, I didn't even know what the symptoms of depression were. <laughs> and it caught you off guard like it caught me off guard i'm supposed to be helping you <laughs> I'm I'm, I'm, exactly i'm supposed to be helping you right and so that was the first sign it wasn't the only sign mm -hmm. you see there was one day i was driving to work and i was going down yale street people in houston if you're familiar with yale in the heights there's a part right before washington avenue where Yale Street goes under the railroad tracks, right? And so I'm in that spot with my car in the incline. I am so wound up, Lady O, that I stick in a meditation CD in the car. Now, first of all, red flag, <laughs> meditation CD says, do not operate equipment while listening to this meditation. I should have known something was wrong, right? Here I am so wound up, I stick in a meditation CD. Now, hold on, lean in. Y'all not going to believe this. Okay. And I brought some incense and lit it in the car. Oh, my goodness. Because I'm hoping that I can relax in the 20-minute drive between my house and getting to the car. Right. So I stick the cigarette lighter in. It pops out. I light the incense, and I accidentally drop the cigarette lighter, you know, the one built in your car. And so I took my foot off the brake and hit the car in front of me. No. Oh, my yes. goodness. Yes. Now, let me say this. I had two, and I can't remember if it was two or three. I had two or three car accidents in about a 60-day period of time. Mm, mm, mm. That red should flag. have said to me, red flag, red something's flag. going on, because mm -hmm. the common denominator in all of these car wrecks is not the other person. It's you. you. Me. What's happening? <laughs> but I and never you stopped. say that to yourself, too. But you exactly. just kept going. I never I never stopped to notice what I was noticing. Mm -hmm. Even the sense of feeling wound too tight. Mm -hmm. I didn't stop to say, wait a minute, this isn't how I normally feel. Why mm -hmm. am I feeling this way? Maybe right. I need to talk to my doctor. Right. Notice what you're noticing. Right. You are your first line of defense mm -hmm. for your own mental health. And don't discount uh -huh. what people who love you say to you. Right. If you have friends that love you and they say, are you okay? Yeah. You look tired. Mm -hmm. You look worn. You look frenzied. You know, I noticed you, you've not really been taking care of yourself the way you normally do. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. Notice. Notice. Don't discount the feedback right. from friends and family who love you. Who love you. Now, was, was your family able to pick up on some things? Did I know you're married and you have children where... Or did you find yourself um, short tempered with them? Or uh, I know some people get offended at a whole lot of little things and argumentative. And sometimes did your family notice anything on any red flags? And You know, my kids were in middle school. And I think between Rudy and I, we were so wound up living in this glass house, the four of us, uh -huh. none of us particularly noticed, but people on the outside did. Nice. And I had one or two friends. One of the other things that happened to me, and I now know it was a part of the depression, months before the actual day when I just, when my mind, body, and spirit just couldn't take it anymore, mm -hmm. and I got in bed and didn't get out, right? Mm -hmm. Months before, every time I was in church, I would just start crying. And I just couldn't help it. It was just like the, the waterworks turned on. Yeah. I found myself feeling more sensitive about things too mm -hmm. but I didn't think that it was something physical mental and emotional happening with me I didn't know what it was you thought it was the Holy but, Spirit right <laughs> and I'm gonna tell you girl if I tell you the Holy Spirit has been blamed for a lot of stuff a lot of things right? <laughs> the, it, it was my mind body and spirit each trying to get my attention now let me tell you about the body part I, I was experiencing lower back pain, mm. all right? 
my my teeth. I was having problem with my teeth. One day I was sitting on the sofa. I had bitten into an apple. I went like this to bite it and a back tooth shattered in my mouth, right? Mm -hmm. When your body is going through all of these things, trying to give you hints that something is going on. And I was like clueless. Mm. Notice what you're noticing. I would encourage every person listening here mm -hmm. to do 30 days of just writing down what you're noticing about yourself. Today, I had a good day. Good. Uh, I ate three balanced meals. I walked. Mm -hmm. It was a good day. Day two, mm -hmm. I overslept. I realized I stayed up too late last night. Right. I drank too much wine last night mm -hmm. or whatever you might be doing, right? Make <laughs> notes, take 30 days to right. see what's going on in your life, to mm -hmm. see how you've been living. And right. if you see two weeks of behavior that you know is not life-giving, mm -hmm. then get some.